Friends, colleagues and listeners, here we are again with the weekend show. And for those of you who are watching it on a regular basis, you've seen that we're doing it bi-weekly at the moment. Not sure whether we'll continue with that yet, just depending how things are. But, you know, a lot of it is down to the um, to the schedules of both myself and Stephen and travel, which has been quite extensive lately. So do apologise for those who are missing it. And for those who are happy with it being bi-weekly, I'm glad we can please. So, Stephen, nice to see you again. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Good afternoon from Kuala Lumpur. Yes, mate. And you are looking very, very trim, mate. You're looking well. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if it was um, sort of self-induced or um, or the, sort of the trials and tribulations of work had contributed to um, to putting me onto the onto a better footing when it comes to diet. But uh, but thank you. Yes, I'm, I've done I've done well. Um, but it's, but, uh, it's, it's, it start, it's it starts. Now, isn't it? Sorry, Chris. It's getting a lot busier, Steve. I mean, yeah, it's are... getting a lot busier. Um, I mean, I've been working recently, and this this is this is no you know this is no violin. This is this is thankfully a good story, but it's a fact that um, that in our business we're now you know uh, putting in the hours, um, you know, busy every day of the week with client activity, which is which is fabulous. Uh, that extends across the broader Skylight team, um, uh, and uh, and so we're very very chuffed. I think, Chris, that we're starting to see. Um, not only you know a return to a level of normality, but a but a return to you know uh, to I guess you know getting business back into the supply chain and the service partners are, are reaching out and people are now calling out saying look we've got this set of problems and these problems are caused uh, in a, in the in the night of the good the, the best possible way but these problems are caused by this this very sharp increase in um, in traffic so it is very good to see i am very pleased um i just wish there were two of me right now uh, which would which would help solve my my personal life and my professional life um by satisfying my my family commitments um uh, and not that don't jeopardize my um, professional commitments unfortunately i've not yet found a way to do that but if any of our listeners know please do write in yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm sure. Well, yeah. I'm. I'm just trying to think there when you said like that. You wish there was two of you. How many people would think? Oh <laughs> my God Almighty! Yeah. But, uh, that, yeah, that's I, maybe you're right. Maybe maybe <laughs> maybe my um, my uh, compatriots uh, might not necessarily wish there were there were there were two of me. But maybe yeah, one, no. one Stephen is enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 another story. Listen, mate. Right now, a few things to talk about today. <clears throat> but yeah, one indeed. thing. One thing, Steve, that I thought was absolutely terrible, and for all the you know, so much positivity about regulatory and 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 about certain criteria that people have to abide by, and then this story this week, which I I thought was terrible, which I, I I'm not sure if you remember, there was um you know there was a soccer soccer player Emiliana Sala, and a yep. pilot called David Ibbotson. and they yep. they both they both died when an illegally chartered Piper Malibu crashed into the into the into the sea yeah. there you know coming from france to wales now firstly what a terrible terrible thing for that that poor young fella you know with his life ahead of him and such a privileged life being a professional footballer yeah. and then and then also for the for the poor pilot as well but now as the story's unfolded what a terrible terrible series of events that led up to that steve well i i haven't seen that I, I remember the 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 event chris but we're just saying before the show i can't believe that it was in january 2019 it was yeah. such a long time ago um but i think very early on we suspected when i say we i mean there were reports that were you know um uh, coming out suggesting that the aircraft had not um you know was not on a uh i didn't hold permission for um for public transport uh, operations um that the pilot was inadequately licensed um and the aircraft wasn't operating on a on an aoc which would have allowed you know the um the aircraft to be chartered in a, in a formal official way with all of the safety mechanism and support and oversight and governance that that allows yeah um, so quite quite honestly they did this on the fly and they did this on the cheap and uh, when you think about it, chris the, the, the most surprising thing that to me was we know how much these players are are earning we know how much money is swirling around in 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 the upper you know echelons of football uh, whether you're top of the EPL or bottom of the EPL it doesn't really matter the, if you're yeah. in the premier league the amount of money is eye-watering and yet they did this on the cheap to save a couple of quid 
to get the player um, you know, out of France and into, into Wales under the cover of darkness. I mean, it's just all shoddy, Chris. It was all shoddy, and it could it could absolutely have been prevented. I know we said that about a lot of accidents, but this was an unnecessary uh, death by by uh, of two people that really was um, was a very sad event and could well have been prevented because the controls that exist are in place to prevent these things uh, happening. I suspect, however, there are many more of these. Um, you know, I think uh, in this, in this interesting that somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but it's sort of this this sort of grey charter or this grey market for um, for uh, you know private jets. I mean, this was not a jet; this was a Piper Navajo or a Chieftain or something of that or a Malibu. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, Malibu, yeah. Um, uh, but um, you know, the private jet. A lot of these owners don't operate them on AOCs; they're operated as private transport. Um, and uh, however, they sort of lease them to their friends. Um, you know, with with money that uh, that transacts between them, uh, I I suspect, and um, uh, I suspect there's a lot of this goes on. That doesn't mean that they're unsafe inherently, but it just means that the you lack that oversight and governance that really should be there when you're chartered, when you're paying money for a service. Uh, it's it's awful, Steve, and and you know the other shocking thing. Um... The other shocking thing was that um, the carbon monoxide, which got into the into the uh, cabin, that that could have been prevented by having a detector, which could have been bought and put in for fifteen pounds. Well, Chris, I mean, it's a long time since I was learning to fly, but um, uh, probably, well, actually, more than twenty years ago, uh, twenty-two years ago, I think I got my PPL. Yeah, that'd be about right. And I remember when I was flying in, in, in Cessnas or Pipers and, you know, aircraft not dissimilar to, to, to this aircraft with, you know, uh, piston engines or, um, or um, you know, turboprops. They, um, they all had uh, these little, little, these little, little white squares that used to just sort of, you know, have on top of the, um, in the cabin and attached to the roof or, you know, sellotape to, to the back of a seat or somewhere within the cabin that, you know, pre-departure every flight, you used to check that, um, that carbon monoxide uh, uh, detector. And uh, it wasn't sophisticated and it wasn't expensive. So, you know, these were these are flying schools where, you know, learning to fly back then was a hell of a lot cheaper than it is uh, now. But, um, you know, but the margins within flying training are not enormous. People might think otherwise, but really they are not. Um, and uh, therefore, you know, as a small flying school, we had, we, we had these installed in every aircraft. Um, it's not difficult. Uh, it's not rocket science, uh, but it's cost the lives of um, of two of two um, two individuals. I think the point, the, you know, the point making is things that you know uh, things that you would expect to be done correctly, and things that you would expect that there might be problems with. That's what shocks you, you know. And and for me, it was terrible, and and it, it brought back memories of. I used to live. I, I used to live in the states in Atlanta, and I used to fly regularly between between Atlanta and Miami on Value Jet. And um, on that particular flight, Value Jet. Oh, Maury uh, Flanagan. Uh, that, Morris. Yeah. Uh, Value Jet, my friend. Yes, Value. Yeah, yeah, a, a crash in the Everglades. I remember. Yes, it did. It did. It did. The owner was a guy called Morris something, and mm -hmm. he went on to do something with the Legion, I think. Yeah. Well, flight five nine two. Okay, coming out, and that that after they did the investigation you know when they return you know when they return the oxygen um you know for when the, you pull down and you got the mask yeah. yeah okay well they that obviously they have to send them back every now and again you know to be for for, for maintenance or for for re the oxygen, the oxygen concentrator you mean or yes yes right. and yeah. they, they had some black tape when the caps were missing that they put over the top of it you know to prevent that, that spark that that you know when, when you pull on the core oh, the oxygen concentrator yeah exactly right and um they they used they they didn't have any of that tape or the caps and they used a different tape and then that's what came off on several of them on the flight as it took off and it was terrible you know when you think something so basic and how and why do people do things like that and and you know and, and afterwards it's always easy to say Oh yeah, we could have, should have, would have, but you know, 105 people, 110 people actually on that flight lost their lives, mm. and then you know, and then this happening again, and you think, how on earth can these things be happening? Which brings me to something that I want to talk to you about today because it's something that's becoming more um, more sought after now as to whether or not people are doing the right level of validation and verification 
whether it be audits, whether it be self-assessments, whether the SLAs make sense, Steve, you know, some of the focus on KPIs and targets. There's been a lot of adjustment or re rethinking now as we're coming out of, of um, you know, of all these lockdowns and seeing the markets open up and now the pressure's on people to do things a lot more and a lot quicker. And, I, you know, I, I think it's an area now that really, really needs to be looked at in a, in a much, much different way. Yeah, I think, well, um, you'll get no disagreement from me on that one, Chris. Um, but given this is a this is a, a topic that, um, that we, 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 we've, we've tread the boards on this a number of times. Um, but I think even more critically, you know, as the, as we had, you know, look at the restart, airlines coming back, big bang now, some big announcements over the last few days, the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, Emirates announcing today they need, uh, I think, 6,000 additional people, um, including 600 pilots, 3,000 cabin crew. I mean, the numbers are now kind of staggering. This is lovely to see, by the way. So please don't please don't misunderstand the point I want to make. That that, that is that is all all very good stuff. However, uh, the pace that this now has to be accepted and injected and inducted into the operation and the stress that that creates on on the operation, on the business, on the supply chain. We know that it's difficult to get. You know, uh, um, sorry, I've not been a hospital. Sorry, looking at my um, thing. This is my quarantine uh, tag. Um, <laughs> I have been at hospital in the last month a few times, but uh, we won't dwell on that. Um, but um, uh, I'm in, under quarantine until uh, until Wednesday or Thursday, I think. Um, so, um, quite why we still have quarantine, I've got no idea. But uh, but never mind, we do. It seems rather perverse, but um, that's another story. Uh, but you're right, Chris. We, we we need to make sure that we that the the controls and the audits and the oversight and the assurance keeps pace with the level of activity, um, because it's very easy to redeploy people or to have the you know the restart team, as I think a lot of businesses have put together. Yeah. The yeah. restart team are those that are responsible for, blah, blah, the restart. However, um, business as usual still kind of um, you know kind of ticks on and does its thing. Um, I think within that those restart teams, there probably already is a very solid representation from the safety, security, quality assurance uh, units. Uh, if there's not, then there ought to be. But at the same time, we need to make sure that um, that we're not handicapping the business. This is about actually supporting and giving the right pragmatic uh, tools and solutions to help drive the business uh, forward and aid that recovery. What we don't want are people slapping tickets on things like police officers but actually much more in the coaching and solutioning type roles that That's I think are very helpful at this, uh, at this juncture in the, in the restart. Yeah, no, hundred percent, Steve. And also simplifying things that are not critical to the business. You know, some of the SNAs, some of the KPIs, you know, they're unnecessary. It's nice to have, and it's lovely to look at, but well, it's not critical for the business. I think you're right. I think those, you know, I was, I was, uh, you know, engaged in some discussions this week, Chris, around, you know the the uh, what what really ought to be very simple simple solutions um, you know to simple problems problems that exist the world over problems that exist around the industry as a whole yeah. that people are trying to reinvent the wheel they're trying to create things that are that are utterly uh, perverse in the sense of you know is it intelligible by the workforce is it intelligible at the management level well if it's not intelligible at the management level. How do you, does one expect this to be intelligible at the grassroots level where we rely on these people to deliver a service to an outcome, to a set of standards, etc.? So I think that is key. Make, make sure that whatever we're asking for is intelligible. We also now have to be realistic, Chris, that, that, that you know, the, there are some, still some challenges in resourcing and we need to kind of dial down the temperature. I'm not saying dial down the temperature on the safety oversight, the compliance oversight, but dial down kind of the, the focus on the non-core uh, measures, the non-core SLAs, some some of the nice to haves that you that you that you talk about there, yeah. Uh, because I think otherwise we um you know we get too sort of hell bent on on holding suppliers' feet to the floor, nailing their feet to the floor in terms of delivery. But actually, we've got to put the backdrop, the lens that you know that they're discussing or they're uh, being challenged with today as well is the same as the rest of it is, which is we're short of people. We can't get people through the training pipeline quickly enough. We can't get people through the recruitment pipeline quick enough. We're waiting for X number of security clearance or, or ID passes or CRC or CTC checks or DBS checks or whatever the hell we call them now 
to be completed and um, there is there is a lot of pressure on on industry i think the customers are far more uh, understanding today of the need to take longer when i checked in in dubai the other day the um the you know the the queues in um in the area of the terminal where i was um where i was were were um were out the door i waited 20 minutes i've never waited 20 minutes to drop a bag in dubai in my life um but everybody i have to say in the queues were calm and um you know nobody would seem to be t terribly flustered by it um because the level of documents that one needs these days is still horrendous yeah um yeah. and so we can't put pressure on people to work work faster we've got to work smarter um but the customers are a little bit more accepting so let, let's let's focus on the areas that matter let's not take the foot off the pressure or the foot off the pedal when it comes to ensuring we deliver safe sustainable outcomes but sometimes when it matters you know uh, delivering a, an sla of a first class customer being checked in in you know five minutes of dropping bag within five minutes of arrival that actually does not matter right now what does yeah. matter is making sure that it's done properly consistently intelligibly yeah no i agree i agree and 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 uh you know, realistic, responsible resourcing rules. You know, that's that's what and, and what you said there. So many times when you when you you know you visit or you, you join a company or whatever, and you you look at what people expect, and then when you talk to people actually on the ground, they if they don't know the reason why or it they they can't comprehend why or they feel that it's just a something you know a, a bureaucratic or an administrative target that people upstairs talk about but doesn't really matter on the floor, then it's a waste of time. And I think those those realities now have got to come back and come back as quick as possible. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Now, so, something else I wanted to ask you as well. Now, okay, so, and and this 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 I think really does matter. Um, you know, just recently now, I've been asked so many times by so many people, can I give them an overview of the safety performance indicators across the industry and especially in certain areas? And, you know, everybody talks about data sharing and digitization and, you know, being open and collaborating. But when you look at it, most people don't want to share those statistics. Obviously, you can say on, on one hand, but how much better would it be on the other if they did? Well, I think um, it depends how they're being shared, Chris. I mean, I think there are a number of forums where data is shared. Um, the um, IOSA and ISEGO members, I believe, um, you know, get access to aggregated uh, uh, data. Um, I don't think I don't think pointing fingers or or you know identifying whom is necessarily helpful. Uh, but I think what industry has to do is learn from 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 the the foibles uh, or failures of others um, and make sure that, that is front and center when it comes to implementation, when it comes to execution, when it comes to to developing their own policies and their own uh, safety management systems. But I don't necessarily think it's helpful to 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 name and shame. But I think I think you know th there should be more of that. We 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 probably mentioned this way back, well March or April of last year, Chris. Um, you know when we were talking about transparency and data sharing and you know being honest with people. Yes, I think it's helpful to be honest with ourselves. Uh, it's helpful to be honest with our employees. I'm not sure that um, that it's helpful in the same way that people were trying to get a steal uh, on the vaccination race to get their crew vaccinated first to use it competitively. I'm not sure that flying the safety flag is one necessarily saying oh well i'm safer i'm safer safer than so and so i'm not really sure that um that yeah, is, yeah. Uh, is helpful yeah no no i agree with you there but again just to clarify you know what i'm saying now about sharing it's not about not about naming and shaming but it's just about it's just about so that people can see themselves well, this is where i'm picked yeah, yeah. within this range and this is where i've got to improve absolutely because I you think know, one in of some the... areas in some areas they assume that things are okay because of what they're measuring whereas others Others are a little bit more dynamic because of what they're actually measuring. Well, I think I think there's there's always been this fear of sort of releasing too much data, uh, yes, whether yes, it's ground handlers yes. releasing, you know, other airline audits to to future airline customers during a commercial negotiation, uh, whether it's uh, it's airlines themselves, you know, across uh, their supply chain or between airlines, intra airline, let's say sharing of data. There's always been this sort of this caution or or mm. or. Uh, skepticism uh, about what one will do with that or will this <coughs> excuse me a uh, slight frog in my throat will this um will this cause me any damage competitively or elsewhere you know, I, think, I think i think those those kind of things those discussions have happened and will continue to happen but um we need to find the right forum for it 
uh, and I think it is very helpful to to to, to build on that. Like anything, you know, we, we we learn from other other people's mistakes. We learn from other people's successes. Yeah. Uh, what what we what we don't want to do is in this industry make no mistakes because in my view, if you make no mistakes, you make nothing at all. Uh, one doesn't get better. One doesn't shake the tree. One isn't a disruptor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What we're going to do is, is kind of, you know capitalize on the mistakes that have that have uh, that have gone before us. Um, to direct our, our path accordingly. Yeah, and that's and where you mentioned IOSA earlier. Hopefully that will change as well because there was far too many zero findings, IOSA findings over the last few years. And and like you said, if it, if people aren't finding anything, then people lose, lose the respect for the ex. I had, I had one in an interview last week, Chris. I was interviewing someone and, um, and uh, he was very proud of the fact that um, – in his last airline, uh, he was responsible for the um, for the audit conduct and the audit management, etc. And he said, um, "You know, I'm really proud. I'm really, really pleased that, uh, that we that they walked away with no finding. Wasn't that a wonderful, wonderful uh, job done by me and my team?" Um, uh, I can imagine what you said. I, 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 well, the interview finished very soon after that, and uh, I doubt very much that we'll be speaking to him um, him again. Yeah, now it's a shame that people think that because, you know, if you welcome it and embrace it, I mean, it's like, it's, anything, it's like, you know, personal um, audits, like you know, at the doctors when you go for a checkup, you know, if you don't, if you don't catch something <laughs> early or, you know, you don't, don't get the benefit of it, it's, you know. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not fat. No, no, I no, I don't smoke. No, 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 I don't drink too much. No, 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 no. You know, I said, well, yeah. okay, you're never going to solve your problems then. The first step to solving your problems is admitting you've got a set of problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. Now, um, as far as as far as another another issue, and uh, I know you've seen it, you've mentioned now about the queues in, in Dubai, but the travel is really taking off now. I mean, it's, oh, it's fabulous. you know, it, it really is, it really is good. I, I've, I've been a couple of times and um, <clears throat> I've got pictures from people now. I don't know why they like to persecute me when I'm back here in the UK and it's absolutely torrential rain here. Um, you know, from the Caribbean, they're all over the place now and people are so, so happy to be, to be traveling. Uh, yes, I will. I will take note of that because next week I'll be up in a, a small boat hall in Langkawi. Um, so I will. Uh, <laughs> I will be sending you some images, Chris, for your for your perusal. Thank you uh, so much, my friends. No problem. No problem. Um, look, it's great to see. As I said, Dubai the airport was full. I mean, I was last through there in September, Chris, and it was. Um, it was still. I wouldn't say it was like a ghost time, but it certainly wasn't the Dubai that that I know. I actually would. Hey, uh, you know, uh, hazard a guess at Dubai on the whatever day it was, you know, 29th of October, you know, two years prior. I think there are probably more people flying. Felt busier to me than a, than a, than a normal, you know, Friday morning uh, in um, in Dubai as it would normally have gone. It was great also to see the stats uh, last week um, that were released by Eurocontrol on the individual airline performance. Um, uh, I don't know if it was for the for that week in October or the month of October to date, but um, but the uh, there are some very clear winners and losers in the race to yes. to develop traffic recovery. It was fabulous to see that Ryanair was yeah. 0.1 percent down only on 2019 numbers. Yeah. It was even more amazing to see that Wizz Air were 11 percent up on 2019 numbers, and now that's just fabulous. Um, however, the losers in this, uh, and there are many, there are many more losers than winners, um, but um, but still sort of resting on their on their marks, uh, not able to get out of their blocks is EasyJet down forty five percent, British Airways down forty five percent, and uh, amongst others, who um, really it just goes to show. Um, now I know BA BA's excuse or BA's not excuse, it's the fact America, 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 America yeah. North America. So of course. They've they lost a lot there. That now I think we'll see some of that recovering, Chris, now next month. So so that should get better. Uh, they've also had to because of their lack of North Atlantic flying, they have had um, their short haul market or the short haul network has been has been squeezed as a result. Yeah. I don't think that EasyJet has much of an excuse, however. I think I think this is indicative of some some broader and wider challenges that EasyJet has in 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 recovering their foothold in the market. For EasyJet to be down that significantly. Who operate across very similar markets to the likes of Ryanair, less so with Wizz Air. Wizz Air more focused on Central Eastern European uh, low yielding, low yielding BFR type traffic. EasyJet has always prided themselves on being a notch above uh, Ryanair. Um, but as I said to you, I mean, I was flying in and out of of Mallorca all the, during the summer, 
and um, I flew a few times on EasyJet, multiple times on British Airways, and a few times on Ryanair. Uh, British Airways uh, uh, cabin, club Europe cabin, was almost full every flight, uh, up back up to row 15, 16 on some sectors, which is incredible. Um, Ryanair, the flights were almost always full, and I was still only paying 10 euros, as I told you, and you went, that's too bloody cheap. <laughs> An easy jet, not a soul in sight. Now, there is a problem. When markets are recovering at an individual city pair level, an easy jet are not able to gather that market share. Something is wrong. So uh, I'm not sure. Easy jet had some big liquidity challenges. They were slow to get recovery a foothold back in the market. I'm sure there'll be other views out there as to why easy jet is much slower off the blocks than than um, than the others but i think easyjet is one to watch i think um they had the approach by wizard of course for the acquisition yeah, yeah. a few weeks ago yeah. i suspect wizard are now just waiting in the wings again a little bit more pressure on the city a little bit more pressure on the on their um on their share price and let's see what uh, what happens but um very good to see wizard and reiner in particular doing so well chris and i'm ex easyjet i'm an easyjet alumni i learned my trade at easyjet so this is not me having a dig Actually, it's me willing EasyJet on to do better and get get their bloody um, uh, 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 feet up the uh, the the starting blocks and um, and get in the race. Hey, there you go, almost Churchillian. I'm sure they're listening. They'll respond, I my friend. It very much. They'll well, respond. If anybody, if anybody from EasyJet is listening, please do get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now get back to uh, an, another area that you love, Australia. So they're opening up the Looks doors like now. Looks like our 40th birthday plans are back on. Yeah. Hey. Um, I'm very chuffed to see Australia opening up. Uh, unfortunately, Chris, the socialist uh, states of New South uh, of um, of Western Australia and Queensland are not yet following suit. Uh, you can't yet, as of tomorrow, 1st of November, Australians are now allowed to leave their country. Heaven yeah. forbid you can leave the the um, the uh, what was I going to say? Um, uh, custodian. Uh, or ship of your government um, on this on this penal colony of Australia. You can now get out, um, which is fabulous. However, you can now fly from Melbourne or Sydney to London, but you cannot fly from Melbourne or Sydney to Perth. This is utterly, utterly perverse. Um, Things like that ridiculous. just don't make sense, Steve. They ridiculous. don't make sense. So you can go and see Anti Flo in um, in uh, Salford. Uh, but you can't you can't yet go and see your uh, your mother on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, a bit odd. A it's bit mad, odd. isn't it? Eh? Yeah. So very happy to see that, Chris. I am. I am. Um, I was talking to a friend in Australia this week. Uh, friend, colleague, uh, ex Qantas, now working in a big technology firm down there. Does lots of lots of great work on self service and technology for airlines and airports. I'm not going to give him a plug, um, but. Um, uh, he was telling me that uh, he, you know, sort of, you know, every friend that he's been speaking to can't wait to get out because you know the Aussies are avid travellers anyway. So. <laughs> anyway, he said, uh, he said, Dicko, are you, have you, have you got an Australian passport? I said, no, no, I missed out by a year. I said, anyway, I lost my PR because you know I've been away for too long. They take it away from me after two years. So um, anyway, I said, but just wait. First of December is what it looks like because I, I could get in with either of those, but I can't. And I, as a, as a, as an Australia file. Um, I'm champing at the bit, or chomping at the bit, even. Chomping at the bit. Chomping at the bit. Chomping at the bit. Chomping at the bit. Under starter's orders. <laughs> and uh, what else are we going to say now? So you're everybody's jabbed up. Everybody now, and now the now obviously now the boosters are giving people a lot. Well, now more they're asking for boosters well. now. So Switzerland is saying, oh well, actually, if you, it's it, all right, very well. If it, if it's outside the six months, you've got to have now uh, your booster shot. <sighs> So now, you know, these, these countries open and then, of course, do large groups of people who are vaccinated early. And now the borders have closed again, effectively. This is just a bloody night nightmare. Non what a nonsense. What a nonsense. No, nah, but it's, it's, it's getting better. It's getting better. And every, yeah. everywhere you go now, you're seeing people a lot more confident. And, uh, you know, please, God, next year will be a lot, lot better for everybody. So, Stevie. Carla. Now, anything, anything you want to say now before before we end this? No, I have, I, I have, I have, I have got, I've got nothing profound to offer uh, today, Chris. Um, uh, other than it is great to be back home. It's great to be surrounded with family, and it just shows. Um, I mean, I, I was away at my choice. I wasn't locked away, but um, some people still cannot travel to see their family, Chris. After all this long, it's just, it's just a nightmare. It is. Um, it's incredible it to is, think. Uh, it is awful to see. So. I really wish, um, you know, me having got back earlier this week uh, to to my dog, son, and wife um, was um, was fabulous. I just wish now that if we do get the semblance of normality back, that everybody else 
can get the same because I know there are still others out there that are still stuck and have su uh, and suffering difficult times. So we still think about them as we start to travel more often. There are still countries that they cannot exit or enter. Yeah, yeah, no. Please God, everybody, everybody will get the opportunity. Nothing, nothing like being together with your family. Absolutely. Uh, I would yeah. drink to that if I was drinking, but I'm not. So. No, yeah, yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to see you when you when you when you get back on it, mate. Well, uh, we've got the Skylar Aviation Christmas party now, uh, now in the diary, Chris. So yes, we again, do. Yes, indeed. We'll be very happy to um, to celebrate there, if not before. Indeedy, indeedy. All right, my friend. Listen, it's always a pleasure. Lovely to see you looking. I'm not telling anybody the date or location because we might have a few people. Up and, uh, yeah. I was just. No, I'm, I'm, not, about, I'm not known for buying buying around. I was just about to say that. I was going to say the date and the location. I thought best not. <laughs> I was lovely to see you, see you so sprightly and upbeat, mate. And um, I'm glad everything's as busy as it is. So Thanks, look forward Chris. to speaking to you again. All right, we'll see you next Take week. Care. Take see care, you. lovely boy. See All you. the best. Cheers. Bye. Bye.